Okay, video number 12 out of the Schneider Modicon TM3 expansion series. Today we're going to be taking a look at wiring analog current inputs. That's going to be 0 to 20 milliamps, 4 to 20 milliamps on a TM3 expansion module. So specifically in this video, we're going to be looking at the TM3 AI2, which is going to be an analog input card that can take two analog inputs. But what we do in this card, you can expand it out to go and work with the AI4 or the AI8. The wiring is going to be identical. There's just more inputs that are going to be available on those. Starting in the manufacturer's data sheet, we see that this specific module, the AI2, is going to be available to be used on the 221, 241, 251, or 262. In other words, across the entire Modicon brand that is available here. We do see that as far as current goes, it can take either a 4 to 20 milliamp or a 0 to 20 milliamp signal in there. For those that have never used a signaling before and are wondering why we start with a base range of a 4 to 20 milliamp, uh, the 4 to 20 milliamp really just allows us to monitor that whatever we have is still going to be operational. Whereas a 0 to 20 milliamp, if you get 0 milliamps, it might be because the signal is putting out 0 milliamps, you know, whatever it is, is at a minimum or maximum, or it could also be because the cable is cut. A 4 to 20 milliamp is going to go and let you know when you lose connection with the device because your current will drop below that 4 milliamp minimum threshold. So it just gives you a better style of monitoring. However, because you're only across 16 milliamps total, you do have a smaller resolution that you're able to go and measure. Okay, looking at a little bit more of our uh, details that are given in the complementary section of the product data sheet, we do see that this is going to be a 16-bit signal, 15 bits plus the sign, so we get a very large resolution that we are going to go and have. And we do see as well that we're able to go and take in ridiculously small amounts of current that are going to, uh, are, we're going to be able to read small amounts of current change inside of here. So these values over here, 0 0.305 microamps is going to be on my 0 to 20 or 0.244 microamps of change on my 4 to 20 milliamp uh, current that we are going to have. So tiny, tiny, tiny amounts of current change are going to be able to be picked up by this. Uh, you do need to have a scan time that is going to be associated with this as well. So it takes a millisecond, um, the sampling duration is one millisecond over here. And so you're going to have one millisecond of sampling, then you're going to go and have another millisecond per other channel. So it has to sample through, check the next one, check the next one, check the next one, etc. In this case, we got two channels on our card. So it's going to be a millisecond to sample the first one, plus then a millisecond to sample the next one. Plus then that data then gets sent to the controller and whatever your cycle time is inside of your controller. That's going to go and tell you how rapidly you can take samples out in the field. Do note that it's going to be very much based upon the controller cycle time. So if you are still ineffective at building programs, you could end up with, you know, an extra long cycle just because you're doing things in a uh, manner that's not very flow, you know, oriented where it doesn't move through and you're checking extra bits if you got extra stuff inside of the program that is just complicating stuff. All right, looking down at the rest over here, most of the rest of this is just going to be dealing with percent uh, accuracies that we are going to go and have, small variations for temperature or nonlinearity and things like that. We'll skip past all of that because usually that's not going to be an issue. One of our bigger issues is usually going to be this over here, the rated supply voltage and the supply voltage limits. The card itself, in order to go and take these samples, you can think of it as an ammeter, it needs a power supply, which is going to be 24 volts DC. And that power supply could go up to 20.4 or down as low as 28.8. Moving on to my actual wiring that I'm going to go and have over here. We're going to start by taking a look at the power supply. We need to have an external 24 volt power supply. They show that we're taking the positive in through a 100 milliamp fuse uh, into my plus 24. And then I'm going to go and take the negative in as well. This is going to go and power up all of the electronics that are going to go and exist inside of there. And these electronics are going to be the metering that's going to go and read all the rest of my signal coming in. We do see as well that this card needs to be grounded. We got this symbol here for a protective earth. We are going to go and apply a ground to that and we need to have it connected to the same as what we have these shields connected to. That's going to be your symbol showing that we are using a shielded cable on our output. For the rest, we just take a look at our 0 to 20 or 4 to 20. We're going to take the positive into the plus. Uh, so here's input 0 plus and then the negative into the negative input 0 negative. And here we have input 1 negative and input 1 plus as well. Pretty straightforward. 
When it comes to fusing, try to find something that is going to go and fit alongside next to your PLC. I suggest using like DIN rail type of fuse blocks. You can either use CCs with a fast acting HCLR tile of fuse, or you can use these with the smaller glass or ceramic fuse. Either way, both of these fuse holders that we're showing here do have indication when we do have a blown fuse. Very handy because if you're getting a zero you know, signal in there, it could be because you have lost power to that card as well. Okay, so now we have got our components themselves. We're just gonna zoom in a little bit on the PLC here first, just to take a look at the card. We see we've got a 251 as my main CPU that's gonna be doing the data processing. We see that we're using a TM3 AI2H over here, which is gonna be the card that we have. We see the 24 volts, zero volts, and the protective earth. We've got these NCs over here, which are gonna be not connected. Uh, that's what it stands for. It does not stand for normally closed. It's just a not connected input. And then here's my zero plus or minus, and here's my one plus or minus that I'm going to have. Zooming back out over here, let's just examine. Oh, I just went too far back, too far forward there. Uh, zooming back out on this one here, let's just examine my AC path. We see that we have AC being brought in through a DIN rail mounted circuit breaker. Oh my goodness, I don't know what's going on here with my uh, computer. We'll try that again. We've got AC being brought in through my DIN rail breaker into a 24 volt DC power supply. That DC power supply is then going to be sending out 24 volts that we are using to go and power up my main PLC CPU that over here, as well as we are taking 24 volts and we are dropping it down over here. We're going to use that to go and power up this card. The card should be powered up separately from the main unit. So let's do that right now. We're going to go and take a 24 volt positive from here up and into my plus 24 volts over there. We're going to go and take a 24 volt negative over here. We can see that we have got a negative brought over to these DIN blocks over here. We'll go take that one in right over there. And then we're going to go and take a ground in from our closest ground. So we'll come out of the top of this one. We don't need to always come out the bottom and we'll apply that in like that. This now provides all of the power that we need for this card over here. I have no idea what's happening here right now, but apparently my mouse is getting just a little bit twitchy. Zoom in right over here. Right over there. Perfect. So right over there, we can see the power that is now being brought into that card. I have to reset my computer after this or something. I don't know. Anyways, we'll work on to my um, Inputs that I'm going to bring in, we know that we've got those two inputs that are going to be on the card. Over here, we do see that we have got these field devices. And the field devices themselves, one of these is going to be a 4 to 20 milliamp. The other one's going to be a 0 to 20 milliamp. And we'll try and zoom in. Oh, we'll look at that. It's working right now. On these, what we see is that we've got a shielded cable coming in. And that means that we've got a positive and negative signal. We've got a ground that is inside of the cable. Not all cables have the ground inside. Uh, but then we also have got this shield that's going to be around the outside over here. The shield should be connected on the sourcing end, and then it should be disconnected on the far end. You never connect both sides of the shield, just the one end of the isolate it, tape around it, or something like that at the far end. So we're going to go and connect those shields in, and then we're going to go and connect in my IO positive negative. And I wish I could do that when I'm zoomed in, but then I start running into problems with my computer. So we'll just do this one at a time. We're going to start by taking my shields up and over to my ground. Then we're going to take my ground cables up and over to my ground block as well. So all the shields, all the grounds are going to tie down here at the sourcing end. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take in our positive and negative. So my 4 to 20 milliamp, you can take it into either one of them. We'll take it into this first one over here. We're going to bring it into the IO plus, and we will take this one into my IO negative. And then we'll do the same off of this one here. We'll take this one into IO plus on input number one, and this one over here onto input number zero. And that's it. That is our, we'll just zoom in so we can see it a little bit clearer over here. That is going to be my current sensing that I'm going to go and have. It would not matter which one you take inside of here. What you're going to have to do is inside of your programming later on, designate channel zero as being follow it through over here, 4 to 20 milliamp, and you'd have to designate channel 1 as being 0 to 20 milliamp. 